good day dear friends this is continuation to the previous module on kidney stones where i talked about about the general concepts of kidney stones with you now this today i will be talking about the case based scenarios on some kidney stones and uretric stones basically on urolithiasis so you will be able to grasp what are the types of cases will find in your clinical practice when you start practicing or those who are practicing will be helped to enhance their clinical knowledge these are very simple cases i'm not go to details but simple simple cases how do you deal with them also this can come as your exam cases in your theory exams can help you while writing short notes and also in your viva tables okay so without uh, uh, wasting time let us go directly to our presentation today so so this is the case based discussion we have um uh, this i'm sorry uh, there this is a patient very common in our scenario in a clinical practice a young male individual has come with your emergency department with urinary colic okay he had a symptom of this right loin pain radiating to the front previously two episodes which he had uh, basically neglected taken so over the counter paracetamol so uh, ibuprofen and then he just forgot what really happened to him now he has come with acute total pain to the emergency department when you have a 25 year old individual coming to the emergency department or to your clinical practice with the acute total pain in an odd hours early mornings or late night then we can rest assured you're dealing with some uh, some problematic situation okay so uh, first of all you have to examine the scrotum because the first and important thing the diagnosis you have to get entertained in your diagnosis uh, in your head is your Acute is basically is a testicular torsion, young individual, young male with acute scrotal pain. So the basic signs of during investigation, you see the scrotum is swollen. There's a reddish uh, hue on the skin. We touch the testes. The patient reads in pain. It tries the what is known as the friend sign. You try to elevate the testes, and the patient tries to stab you because of the is a you're exaggerating the pain. Okay, now this is a problem. We can't do friend sign because the patient is already in agony. What's the what's the notion of giving him more agonizing situations? Okay, now the second part is acute. epididym orchitis where the same symptoms are there but the patient has symptoms of uti prior to that and uh, patients also has a urinary problems a low urinary stream urgency overactivity all these things prior to it but again the clincher of the diagnosis is your ultrasound scrotum with doppler it will show you whether you're dealing with epididym orchitis or you're dealing with an acute testicular torsion so it's often said in examination point of view that um, that even if you don't have a us scrotum in your hand and you feel you have a single simple out of notion that you are dealing with acute testicular torsion don't waste time take the patient to operation theater after proper stabilization because you may lose a testis if it is led to linger for quite some time there can be necrosis there can be gangrene of the testis testicular torsion and the testis that the gonad will be lost so better do an orchitopexy uh, quickly rather or on the uh, on the error of diagnosis on the judgment of doctor then let it linger let the um, uh, day settle down for for a person coming from uh, for a radiologist to come from a lot of away places or sending the patient away for take one or two days to find that you are dealing with a testicular torsion but this is a very it's a very diversion from what we're talking today in this case the third clinical diagnosis must come entertain in your mind is the other patient may having a urethral stone impacting the lower ureter view junction that's a vesico ureteric junction okay so uh, so in that cases in this case you see that the uh, testis is normal the scrotum is normal and uh, so that's the diagnosis we entertained so it's a lower uretic junction vesico uretic junction stone we are diagnosed so what is symptomatology of urethrolysiasis is basically there can be a fixed renal pain the stone is in the kidney okay can have a dull ache it's just a discomfort nothing else if there is a hydronephrosis that they get the stone is impact in the pu junction and the kidney is swollen they can have a throbbing pain because the capsular distension causes the irritation of nerve fibers or the patient can have a stone impact in the ureter which can cause a ureteric colic as we have discussed a stone acute shooting pain from the loin to groin or to the tip of the penis if it is a lower uretic stone or the can the second point is the patient can have urinary tract infection so there can be a male individual who is having recurrent uti he has been treated but again he comes back to your clinical practice and you see these individual young individuals the recurrent uti rest assured they can be suffer, suffering from either from urethral stricture or he is suffering from a kidney stone which has been left for, forever for quite some days neglected is have never done an ultrasound okay so dysuria intermittent fever so the young male patient rest assured he can have the he can have a stone which has been missed by clinical diagnostic that he has missed doesn't did, it did, didn't have any investigation done because of that if there is a hydronephrosis with an element of infection and pus formation then it becomes a pyonephrosis and the pyonephrosis the patient with giving is frank sepsis 
that severe pain, fever with chills and rigor, hematuria, nausea, vomiting, totally sick patient, counsel, rest, you have to admit him in under, under your care, in a high dependency, you need to give proper IV fluids and uh, proper IV antibodies, also culture specific. So the patient can have an, uh, symptoms of acute kidney disease because of the stone impaction, bilateral urotic stones, the patient with frank acute renal acu anuria, acute renal failure, all the patient can come with chronic symptoms. The problem is how will you know, how will differentiate a patient of AKI or a CKD due to a stone disease? If you have two patients coming to outpatient department, the patient with a horrible form of blood biochemistry reports but a normal looking person will be having an acute renal failure while a person with a horrible looking faces or flushed faces and uh, swollen faces or bipedal edema and he's having uh, a spirit distress and ascites all these things plus but he's having a not nearly normal blood bank you think as that he can have a chronic kidney disease there are several stages of chronic kidney disease which we'll discuss later or the patient can be totally asymptomatic okay so we did a CT scan into CD KOB in this case, and we found a small ureter lust in the uterus vesicle junction. So initial stabilization. Now the patient's relatives are asked whether you will give him a give him a trial of a medical expulsive treatment or not. Or but you said I want to go for surgery. But they, they ask for medical expulsive treatment. So what is medical expulsive treatment? This is known as the MET or the conservative treatment. MET yes or MET no. When will you go for MET? MET is for small stones. The patient is not in acute agony. There's no major hydronephrosis. Okay. And the patient doesn't seem to nausea, vomiting, all these things are absent. Just one episode of pain. Now it's off and it has come with a stone impact and lower a small stone. But same picture, but the clinical scenario is different. So what is happening is also lower it is not for upper but this picture shows that the stone, if, you, if what is what's the protocol? The protocol is you give him alpha blockers like tamsulosin, give him proper hydration, oral hydration, and also you can give, add a add a add a steroid like a deflacicot. All this will, will relax the site of impaction of the ureter of this uretric stone and allow the stone to pass easily. For good for lower the stone, four, five millimeter stones, no hydronephrosis, patient not in clinical symptoms, but there's a protocol for that. You said you won't, I won't give you more than five to seven days for this for this met to uh, prolong. It won't prolong for your last your lifetime, even though you are not having pain. So you have to come back after five to seven days with a redo ultrasound, redo extra, redo CD scan, whatever is the previous investigation have done. And also during the time he has to go to the toilet and either strain uh, uh, either urinate on a strainer or uh, urinate on the floor to see if the stone has expired or not because you won't be able to understand when the stone goes out okay so what are the problems most of the problem most of these people they just lost to follow because they don't have any pain they follow but they come later on uh, with a stone severe impacted and severe infection a severe uretic colic and kidney as well basically uh, on the geopardy okay that's the very important the patient was a compliant enough for a follow-up now this is what we did we did a ureteronoscopy this is the cystoscope we passed in a guide where it a contrast and we saw the stone and then we broke with the litho, with the urs we do use a normal uh, lithoclast but you can use a laser lithotripsy also so there are two energy sources which you use in a rigid rigid urethroscope this is the instrument we use and uh, which is the laser lithotripsy and the play and the and the uh, pneumatic lithotripsy okay now, elderly obese lady has presented the fixed renal pain. Now, what is this? What is, as you can see in the picture, is you have an ultrasound which shows a, pain, a stone in the lower calyx. And we, this is an acoustic shadow. It's been shown up. We did an x ray, and this is suggestive of stone in the lower calyx. We did it on an IVP, and the IVP showed, uh, or a CT IVP, which showed three features. The stone, which is less than two centimeters, is a wide infundibulum. Wide infundibulum is the, the, is the, the, the calyx, and there's a pelvis. Okay, the angle is wide. And the and the channel of the passage of the stone fragments into the pelvis is also white. Okay, if you have all these features that the patient wants ESW, you can jolly well give her the ESW, which we did in this setting. The problem is, this is the ESW suite. This is a picture taken from the internet. Very sorry for that, because I didn't get a proper picture from my center. So this is done under CM guidance and under ultrasound guidance. And you can focus the stone, you can just focus sound energy to break the stone. You're going to use ultrasonic or piezoelectric, but you are using the uh, focus sound energy to break the stone. Now, what really happened at the date of the night, she came back to our emergency department with what is known as a necklace of stone stuck in the ureter. This is known as the post ESW stone stress. What went wrong? The went wrong part is that he had a stone about more than one centimeter, which we'd failed to understand. We must have stented the ureter wrong because if you had put in a DJ stent prior to do this, if you had put in a DJ, these are DJ stents, okay. If you had put this uh, before we put in this started shockier tripsy, then what would happen? The stent would have made the ureter patent, made the ureter supple. So the stone fragment should have easily moved out. Now it has formed, it has been obstructed by necklace form. 
Now, what you have to do now, obviously, you have to admit her and do a urotorian scope than the previous one. And you have to break the stone with lithoclast, laser lithoclast, pneumatic lithoclast, put in a digestion again. Right. So, this is the one case. The other case is a uh, fit young man. I said recurrent UTI. Recurrent UTI in a fit young man, be rest assured that he may be suffering from a urethral stricture or he may be suffering from a kidney stone disease. Okay. And this is the stone. We had a stone, a large pelvic stone with extension into the lower calyx and also in the other calyx as well. We did IVP, which uh, we found out now. What are the things we need to do? You have to do a urine routine culture. Most of these are infectious stones, okay? And they tend to recur if their small fragment is left behind or not, okay? So you do a routine, routine culture, see the patient is the alkaline urine, severe infection, you have to control the infection. Most of these infectious triple phosphate stones, you know, stubite stones or the, or the stagon stones, the stones which involve in the pelvis and also two or more part of the calyces, two or more major calyces being affected. Now these are having alkaline urine, okay? And what, because, why, why? Because most of these calcium oxalate stones, uric acid stones, cystine stones, they form in the acidic urine. 80 percent of the stones are calcium oxalate. 10 percent of triple phosphate stone that are alkaline urine. Now, rest 10 percent of this uric acid, cysteine, all these things. Okay. Now, the problem with alkaline stone, these of this triple phosphate stone that they produce UDAs. The, they are, the bacteria produce UDAs. The, what are the bacteria? There's a propidatia. They are proteas. They are uh, pseudomonas. Very important. Pseudomonas. Pseudomonas infection. Recurrent UTF pseudomonas. They are, they are liable to have some stone formation. Okay. They are all very complicated UTIs. Then also, they can have clepsia also staphylococcus mycoplasma urolyticum the release udas udas will act on urea of the urine and produce ammonia and raise the alkalinity of the urine so in these cases you don't have any role of giving him flushing him with alkaline solutions you basically doing more harm than any good to this patients okay so in this case obviously your blood biochemistry recurrent stone formers you have to take the calcium uric acid and the parathyroid hormone also patients may have hypercalcium and hyper you could that we had discussed in the previous module okay and usg and ivp and cd scan so actually what are the treatment options Options we have obviously you can't give for conservative treatment there's nothing called a silent stone it has been seen on on many uh, on many uh evidence-based studies that even after 10 to 15 years a stone small stone which you are left over as a silent stone uh, made conserved uh, made to follow up conservatively did have an acute episode so a silent stone is basically a myth a symptomatic stone is basically a myth you have to treat him in 10 to 15 years with a young individual, obviously, even in surgery. So why not now? If the patient is motivated enough for the elderly individuals, very sick individuals, then you can try conservative treatment or non-operative approach or wait and watch. So this is a fit man with recurrent duty. Obviously, give the one so conservative is out. The other is ESW, obviously, large stone, large stone bug, ESW out as per the criteria we have discussed. Two is whether you can do a retrogenital surgery again. We use laser lithotripsy with a URS, which is rigid, not rigid, but a flexible. But this is for a stone load about one centimeter, 1.5 max to max. Well, before, well, more than that, you have to stage the surgery, increase the cost, increase the patient morbidity, more amount of anesthesia required, more number of sittings required. So also the, the instrument also is jeopardized, okay? the high costly instruments. So the two options are happen are in your options. Now, one is PCNL, the other is obviously open surgeries. Fine, open surgeries do have their own problem of complications, but in these cases, you know that they have a good calyx and you can enter through the calyx. So what is the PCNL? This is for the basic part. So for basic, what is PCNL? I'm sorry. This is you make a hole in the aperture in the kidney to one of the calyces through outside through the renal tract and tract goes through the renal parenchyma inside. This is a nephroscope we use. This is a dilatation we use making a, making a puncture in the eye under the C arm. Then we dilate with the tracts and make an amplus dilator put in. Then we introduce our scope and break the stones with the lithoclast and uh, pneumatic lithoclast. This is how we make the patient stone free it's from the back, from the loin approach. Okay, a keyhole surgery. So this is the PCL surgery uh, in brief. Okay, now we have a patient with an elderly male, patient with a painful acute or chronic urine retention. So this elderly guy had a urine retention for quite some time and uh, he's suffering from this problem for quite some time. Now he has come with acute painful retention. What really happened is that then you did an X-ray and saw a large stone inside the bladder. Now I made a mistake in my residency dose and I actually cut the open the patient, the bladder the prost of this patient, thinking to be bladder stone. And I was mis I was basically misguided. Whatever I made a mistake that the patient has actually had a calcified dermoid cyst in the uh, this thing in his retroperitoneum. It was not a bladder stone. It was actually compressing upon the bladder from, and it causes retention. So that, that the lesson I have learned in the very hard way and that I'm telling you to all of my students, all of you students, to your ear, 
to listen on all of you people who are listening to my lecture to do always do an ultrasound prior to see this picture and putting a knife on his bladder and or you also need to do a cystoscope okay so the basic thing is a large prostate large bladder stop you have to open the open the bladder and take out the stone and also do a prostatectomy if the process is obstructive plus you have to take a biopsy of the bladder because because large stones often cause of long term they can cause squamous metaplasia or squamous cell carcinoma changes in the bladder so you have to take a bladder biopsy also role of biopsy is important if somebody says can you do endoscopic surgery obvious large stone will need a long time to for breast stone to break by cyst with a tipter so this cause urethral damage and the patient will end up with a urethral stricture so the other way around is you can put a spc just like a pc run you put an spc track and put a nephroscope inside known as the supra pubic cyst with a tipter that is also a very valuable op valid option so over here the last case i want to discuss is a young female with blood out obstruction now this is the ureterocele ureterocele is basically a pouch like of the dilatation of the lower ureter as you can understand which is invaginated inside the bladder so it looks like this a stone inside the cavity the lower ureter this is the acoustic shadow being created by the stone and you see the extra it's a large stone even if a large stone think about it whether it's lodged in the lower ureter or in the ureterocele or not so you have to always do always do a imaging cell like a ct scan which shows the ureter to be within the stone to be within the ureterocele and this is a typical appearance it's not this case this typical appearance of a ureterocele on ivp is known as the added headed appearance or the cobra headed appearance on ivp okay the same on the ct ivp here are the same picture so in this case we actually need to incise the ureterocele take out the stone and put in a double jest stent so different types of ureterocele will take a separate class on ureterocele also but ureterocele can also be orthotopic as it happened in this case or can be collapsing it go outside the sphincter area and cause incontinence also okay so these are the few cases we discussed and i hope uh, you could, could understand you have a judgement of how you deal with kidney stones ureterocele stones you can always comment in the section or send me a mail the mail id is belong and come to my website for more case scenarios and video courses so uh, i hope you like this lecture please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so and share the video with your friends so come back with another uh, important video later on till then bye bye